to wipe out half the universe. If he gets all the Infinity Stones, he can do it with the snap of his fingers. Just like that. Welcome to the Pixel Pop Movie Podcast. I'm your host. This fortnight I'm joined by the, hmm, Spicy Ethan? Ooh, spicy. Ooh, yeah, it's me. And the sweet Jesse. Hey, 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 (laughs) Jeevy. All right, so this Friday night we're bringing you a bunch of news. As always, there's a lot to catch up on. There's been some huge trailers uh, dropped this fortnight too, so we've got a lot to talk about. Uh, once we've managed to get through that, Jesse has already seen the latest Tomb Raider movie, so he's going to hit us with some spoiler-free thoughts on what he thought about the film. Uh, and then we're going to delve into our topic of conversation for this fortnight, which is uh, movie memorabilia or collectibles. Uh, so th- things from, you know, starting at the top tier of, of on-set props... All the way down to you know pr- poster prints and pop vinyls and and all the, the rest of it. And, collectibles. Yeah, and what we think about it. But um, before we get to that, let's start with the news because it's a long list. Take us away, Ethan. First bit of news we got today is uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger has confirmed that uh, the script for Triplets has been finished, starring him, Eddie Murphy, and Danny DeVito. Now I've never yeah. seen Twins, so I got no you? idea about this. Nah. Okay. It was sort of during that time in the 80s when Schwarzenegger was trying to break away from being just an action star uh, oh, and dabble right. in comedy stuff. It's it's not too bad. It's not too bad. I, I didn't yeah. mind it. It probably overdue, long overdue for a while. I probably haven't seen it since the 90s. So, But I mean, the joke, of course, being they're twins and one's Arnold Schwarzenegger and the other one's Danny DeVito. And you chuck Eddie Murphy in the mix. And just takes and the joke to the next level. There's a black twin now. Oh, uh-huh. it can happen. It can, but I mean, like, is that enough? For this movie the thing is like good. Eddie Murphy hasn't been in a proper movie in a long time. The last one he was in was Tower Heist hey. with Ben Stiller. Hey, yeah. Pluto Nash what? was a proper movie. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even finish that. So. <laughs> the trailer for Fantastic Beasts: The Crimes of Grindelwald came out. I still haven't seen the first Fantastic Beasts movie. I may watch that this weekend. I have it there. I just haven't seen it yet. Yeah, I haven't watched it either, but I mean, I know my family have, and they both enjoyed it, so... I no doubt Harry Potter films world over... my article. Yeah, no doubt Harry Potter films world world over are super, super keen, so... Yeah, I've seen all the others. I'm very keen. It'll do well at cinema, it'll smash. It'll smash it. I'm I'm really, really happy with Jude Law as um, Dumbledore. He he looks like he's going to be a really good young Dumbledore. Although people aren't happy with Johnny Depp as Grindelwald and think Colin Farrell should have been there. Was but there was some backlash. I agree with the Colin Farrell thing just because I'm a big fan. Yeah, (laughs) there's always people unhappy. Always, yeah. You can't you can't please everyone. All right. Next, we've got Ava DuVernay is directing a New Gods movie for DC. So DC is going cosmic now. Even though DC hasn't even sorted any of their shit out, they're still planning more movies with big directors. For some fucking reason, DC. Do you think that they're, like, a good analogy for this is DC have, like, careened off the road and they're just <laughs> continuing to put their foot on the accelerator to see how far they can get till they get back well, on a different road? Here's the thing, right? Justice League was, the, was, like, a whole bunch of these characters coming together that we've seen in, like, Three other movies. No, two other. Three. Three other movies. It made the lowest money out of all movies that have been released. It made less than Suicide Squad. It made less than Man of Steel. Why are DC still trying? But Justice League is proof that shit's not gonna work. Because there's always hope. That's what gets me though. Like the movies. Oh, there you go, all Superman now, are you? The movies continue <laughs> to to fall over and crash and burn. Yet the DC TV series continue to just do exceptionally well like we've got DC the new kryptonian that you know the got superman Krypton. prologue which yep. has got an initial word back is it's like really good um yeah i thought it looked like shit what so well the point is like you you put you've got the arrowverse you've got you know you've got gotham all the rest like their tv shows are doing infinitely better than their movies and i don't understand why they don't just play to their strengths you know, yeah, if, no, if well, it, well, like like you just said, like it comes down to world building. They've built properly in their TV series. Yeah, yeah. the movies yeah. have been rushed to try and yeah. push the, it up the, there the to try and compete with Marvel. Up. Yeah, and that's yeah. that. I think is ultimately we've said this before. DC's biggest mistake was trying to trying to compete with Marvel on the same battlefield. You know, they didn't need to do that. And, they could they could have just they quietly done. A, they could have just quietly done the Wonder Woman film. Let that sit. Then do a second Wonder Woman, for instance. You know what I mean? And not worry about the the big you know trinity crap you didn't need that well, 
Well, that's why Wonder Woman was so good. It's the only DC movie that I think everyone watched and everyone could identify that it wasn't trying so goddamn hard. Yeah, like and it, it took just the time. wanted to be a fucking movie. Yeah. All right, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, Danny Boyle confirms he is working on James Bond 25, which this means nothing yeah. to me, but maybe something to everyone else. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a massive Bond fan. I, I haven't watched... I've watched all the modern ones, uh, you know, with uh, Daniel Craig. Um... I didn't. I'm not the sort to. Write, I think I got the first one with free with my PS3. Do you remember that they gave Sony gave it away free with PS3s? Fuck, oh, I remember that. Yeah, when the PS3 that actually launched. rings a bell now. Yeah, you, you got you got you got um, uh, Casino Royale for free with your PlayStation. Yeah, that, that's yeah. back when uh, when Blu-rays used to have a little sticker on the saying compatible yeah. with PlayStation 3. Yep. Oh, yep. that's before me. I didn't get a PlayStation 3 until the Slims came out. So yeah, that was you're years only 12, after. So that explains a lot. Yeah, it does. You're right. Anyway, so I mean, I've, I I don't race out and buy them, but I have watched them, and I mean, I will probably watch this one too. You know, when it finally comes to home video, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I, I'm excited for Danny Boyle because he's a good director, but I've never been a massive Bond fan. I love Goldeneye. I like some of the older ones, but I'm not. Yeah, I'm just not really into it. All right. Next, we have uh, Zach Penn is apparently doing another Marvel movie, and he uh, he wrote the first Avengers movie, as well as several other movies that were shit. But he's done Avengers. And he's well, the first Avengers one. was great. The first Avengers was brilliant. It was. So. But, but I mean, know, he also. But we don't did... know what he's writing? No, he just says he's doing another Marvel movie. Right. Previously, he has done. He did X Men 2. X Men 2 was good. Mm -hmm. He did Electra. Terrible. He did X Men The Last Stand. Okay. And he did Incredible Hulk and The Avengers. Although, which Incredible Hulk is this? No, yeah, that's the no, Edward Norton one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Norton. It was okay. And he's done Ready Player One, and he's doing the Suicide Squad too, as well. But, this guy's I mean, got a really fucking up and down career. <laughs> he did Last Action Hero. That was did okay. he? And Charlie's Action Angels, Hero. Inspector Gadget. They and did well. Uh, they, Charlie's Black. Angels did well. Yeah. Yeah. Inspector Gadget I mean, was a bit hit and miss with Broderick, but yeah. yeah. He's, he's that was better than the second one with fucking French Stewart. Yeah, it doesn't count. <laughs> that just doesn't, doesn't take count. much to be better than French Stewart. All right, moving on before we get distracted again. I don't care about this, I'm not going to say that shit. Um, no, go on, what is it? Alright, the Weinstein Company is filed for bankruptcy. Yeah, yeah that, we saw that coming. Yeah, mile yeah. away. Yeah. yeah. They yeah, were talking know. about, like, we don't know, we'll manage, we'll say it, but I, yeah, no. Nah. Yeah. No. Nah. They might as well just let themselves get absorbed by another company. Yeah. All right, probably next... Miramax, actually. I reckon Miramax probably buy them up because the wine, they, uh, they Weinstein yeah. They had, had some really good them. IPs on them, so, I mean, you know, uh, someone will snap it up. Yeah. Disney. Well, they've had a lot to do with Miramax, so if Miramax doesn't yes. snap them up through association alone, then yeah, someone else will. Yeah, definitely. All right. Next, we've got One Woman Two has confirmed to be uh, going into development in June this year. Like filming, production, all begins in June this year. With Gal cool. Gadot back and Kristen Wiig as Cheetah. I'm sure is it it's Gadot? Be... I thought it, isn't it Gadot? Ah, yeah. oh, no, it's some shit. One of them. <laughs> I I could be wrong. I just thought it was Gal Gadot, but then it depends, I guess, on her native uh, tongue. Oh, yeah. oh how she, to say her name? Well, she's yeah, Palestinian. Yeah, it's good dot. It's yeah, it's, it's good dirt. It good is dirt. okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, well, it's see, like a mix of good dot and good dirt. Yeah. Whereas I was sort of implying like a French sound to it, where the T's more silent, I guess. So anyway. Yeah. yeah she she said she said it's pronounced Gal Gadot, like good dirt. Good dirt. Yeah, like like you're not bothering to say good dot properly, yeah. <laughs> right, okay. Alright, next I'm we've sure got... I, I, think, I think we talked about this in the last one. I about like how about things. Dennis Villain Niven... Yeah, okay. He's planning at least two Dune movies. Or more, yeah. It'll probably yeah. take two years to make. I mean, I'm sure no one's in a rush to see it, but we'll, we'll see. Plenty of people are in a rush, you heretic. No, 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 no. Just, think, just because, I, I, just because I, I, your I, day I, is pinnacle... Many you know, people you're... under 40 are in a rush to see it. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, Ethan's highlight of Ethan's, you know, movie day is like Spock goes to Hollywood, right? Anything more Spock complex, anything more complex than that, and he's lost. That's no, not no, true. no, it's just That's totally true. right I know now. that he quite likes the Air Bud and Space Bud series. Oh, it's I mean, me Ethan right probably now. watched Annihilation on Netflix and went, Sorry, what? What What happened? What? Who? No. Is that because no, it's no, too I smart didn't. for us young people? No. Exa well, no, I, did I was not. just picking right. on Ethan at this stage, but I mean, if you want to lump yourselves together, that's fine. I watched <laughs> Annihilation and I sat there for like about 10 minutes and I'm like, Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then I worked it out. Well, yeah, because I finished watching the fucking movie. 
<laughs> for me, in ten minutes, well, my, my mind's too in an infinity war to really care about any other movie news or anything. Gotta recalibrate. Moment, so. I, I, I have I have Ethan's back on the. I don't think as many people are excited to see it as anything, as any other like no. big. I mean, I'm sure story. there's like, one yeah. person in the world who really does not care about it, and that's probably mm -hmm. Sting. He's probably like, oh yeah. fuck, they're really doing <laughs> this shit. <laughs> There's a, there's a lot of people that go and see this. I mean, Dune has always been considered the Lord of the Rings or science fiction in many regards. Yeah, uh, it's it's, it's the the problem is is going to be really? like we saw with oh yeah it's huge. The problem is going to be Star Wars was the Lord of the Rings of science fiction. Ooh. No, no. <laughs> no, Dune is like no. so fucking old. And yeah, so no. cool it's know, a space yeah. opera. Yeah, um, but I mean, yeah, the problem is it's the same thing like Blade Runner. Like it had a huge budget and then it sort of hit the cinema and and went sideways a bit. And that's obviously something Villeneuve and the production company is going to be very careful of. They they have to be aware that the return on this film is not going to be anywhere near as impressive as you know a popcorn flick. Um, yeah. So I wouldn't. I mean, I, I I doubt it, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was almost a straight to Netflix kind of thing. To be honest. Um, Maybe. I, I would like to see like it get the have faith uh, in Villeneuve yeah, because they, they keep they giving do. him these really obscure uh, like, and hard films, feel yeah. things that are not easy to sell to people. Yeah. I had also heard that apparently he was considering John Boyega to be the lead as well. Oh, fuck off. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I'm looking forward to it either way. I, I personally enjoyed Blade Runner 2049 and I'm keen to see what he can do with June. I don't know. I thought it was much better than the original because I thought that thing was fucking boring. But then you, yeah, it, a lot, lot of people have that complaint. Yeah. Alright, moving yeah. on to more din You're Dennis Villeneuve. Uh... <laughs> I was going to say, but a lot of people are wrong. <laughs> it's Denis yeah. Villeneuve, you fucking... D D Denis Yobo. Villeneuve. Speaking of him again, although he, he's not directly Australian, Australian, mate. He's not even Australian. He's just some fucking. Gee. Ah! <laughs> oh! Some fucking Villeneuve bastard. <laughs> fucking Kiwi fuck. Ah. <laughs> oh. uh, right. All right. Denis Villeneuve. Not, yes. Denis Villeneuve. He is not directing this movie, but I'm pretty sure he's producer. But this trailer for the sequel to Sicario was released and I know Jesse and Toby are big fans of it. I couldn't care less, but they are big fans. Have so you I watched the original yet, Ethan? No, nah, it's not my sort of movie. No, it is. It is your trust me. Nah. No, 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 no. No, seriously, jokes aside, do yourself a favor this weekend. Watch the first one. You will be surprised. It will hook you hard. Oh, but I wanted to watch Jumper this weekend. Yeah, yeah, you can watch that. <laughs> this there is plenty of action in it, believe me. There's enough there's I, plenty I, I'm of action. Not, I'm not a straight action. Guy, polar right? opposite yeah, it's not straight action either. You, you need no trust me, you need to watch this I, film. It's good. Like it's it, really it, good. But it hasn't got any like sci fi fancy elements in it. It doesn't need to. It doesn't need to. For me, that, that's why I love in movies though. No no no. Try, do do me a solid. Do me a solid. Watch it <sighs> if it's shit. If it's shit, the next podcast you can tell me how I'm horribly wrong and it's shit. But do me a I solid should. in two weeks, in, right. within the next two weeks, watch the original Sicario on Netflix, alright? And then when you come back, we'll see, alright? You I managed should. to watch uh, Die Hard, so... I was going to say, I watched Die Hard and that was good, so I should trust with this. Okay, well there you go. I it is quite good. Because I was told I had to watch it by something. There's some really media action scenes in it that would literally have you on the edge of your seat. Yeah. Anyway, all right. But yeah, uh, it's next... a great trailer. I'm super hyped for that film. Super hyped for that film. In fact, Jesse's even paying for my ticket when we go to see it at the cinema. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> nice of you, Jesse. See, see, it's 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 on the podcast now. It's it's printed, so it's true. Now. <laughs> it's printed somewhere. <laughs> all right. Next, we have a trailer for Marvel's new TV show, Cloak and Dagger. Yep. I mean, trailers have been out for that, but I think this is the new. One. I still haven't watched this trailer yet. I mean, the, the, it, it's, looks, it's it looks pretty, pretty good. good. It's in the MCU as well. Yeah. So, but not, which doesn't mean shit because it's probably not going to connect to anything else like all the other TV shows and movies do. So, what's the point of fucking saying it? But it's sitting there anyway. Because <laughs> they'll have some passing reference to, you know, yeah, Captain Rock America. Song. Yeah. Or Rock Song was in the trailer, so I'm like, oh, it's Rock yeah. Song, but no one cares about fucking Rock Song. Yeah. All right. Moving on from that shit. Um, Tessa Thompson <laughs> and Chris Hemsworth are reuniting for the Men in Black spin off. Oh, what? Yeah. I didn't hear about this. Yeah. It's awesome. directed by F. Gary Gray, who did Fast and the wow. Furious. And he did that other movie, what was it called? Did, no, he did Straight Outta Compton, didn't he? Oh, maybe. Hang on, I'll find out. Yeah, he did. Um, yeah, yeah, so he's, he's doing the Men in Black spinoff. I guess it's, it's still Will Smith 
Tommy Lee Jones, they're still going to be like kicking around somewhere and probably be some reference to they're, them. They're in some fucking like age community for Men in Black. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. All right, next we have Marvel's Daredevil adds Jay Arley to season three cast. I don't know who he is. What does this say? He would be an honest but ambitious FBI agent willing to, to go to any lengths for his family. I don't think that means shit right now, but that's there. Now, another one here that I think is for Toby and Jesse, and that is the Cobra Kai sequel to Karate Kid that older people yep. care about. Oh, sweet, sweet the leg. About. Yeah. Sweet the leg. He older won- people. I like, I like- it's, you can only get a point by kicking him below the neck and above the waist, and then he kicks him in the face and wins. Oh, <laughs> Directly yeah. in the dick. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the full trailer came out, looks good, keen, hashtag keen. Well, um, look- yeah. It's about time Cobra Kai got some, um, got some reverence. Yeah, it looks interesting. Like, I, you watch that full trailer and you start to get the feeling that, you know, sure, Johnny, Johnny, like, who was the bully, it looks like his life kind of went to shit. Uh, and now it's almost like roles reversed a little bit. Everyone's been saying for years yeah. that he deserved it more. Mm. So anyway, I'll, I'm looking forward to it. And, it. and this combined with another bit of news coming up, I think is it's, yeah. you know is, is YouTube Red really cracking into the, the, the streaming service scene? Uh, I'll check that one here, but that's Impulse, which yeah. is a spin-off sequel to Jumper based on the third book in the Jumper uh, series of books which is based on Hayden Christensen and Rachel Bilson's character from the first jump, but this is their daughter. Oh, wow, we've jumped that yeah. far ahead. Yeah, this is their daughter. We've... Whether or not it actually... Ha- it'll have... I doubt it's going to have Hayden Christensen and uh, Rachel Bilson there in it, but this is, yeah, th- it's based on their daughter. And nothing to take into account, Hayden Christensen has been in shit all lately. Since yeah, Star Wars, really, so I'm pretty sure he would want to... But also... The, the creator of the TV show for um, YouTube Red, Doug Lehman, he also directed the Jumper movie. So right. he, well, he, he had always it. said he wanted to come back and do sequel yeah, movies. Sequel. Um, and I'm, um, yeah, oh, well, this I mean, is, I mean, I, I was one of the few people that didn't mind the Jumper movie. It got panned pretty hard. Um, I, I, actually and I think it. that was well, mainly, I think it was mainly the acting that let it down. Like the acting felt pretty cheesy in some places. Um, you know, like yeah. Sam Sam Jackson can either nail it or he can just come over as cliche. If you know, you know what I mean, and and same yeah. with Hayden. Well, Hayden Christensen's largely, you know, just not I mean, shit. There's, there's four books. <laughs> That's the word you're looking for. There's four books in the for. series, and, and Jumper's like one of those movies that it's on Netflix, and I'm like, oh, this is one of those movies that everyone hates, but I actually secretly love. It's like a guilty pleasure movie. I just sit down a weekend. And I'm like, this is good. I like this movie. It's not bad. Yeah. Everyone else, I would say I loved it, but it wasn't bad. I've got it on DVD. It was fine, you know, I don't have any, I don't understand why people but give us a shit. Yeah, as, as we're saying, YouTube's probably going into some decent original programming. And this yeah. is going to have 10 episodes of an hour long. Okay, so, yeah, which okay. Is, the Karate Kid ones are only 30 minutes, I believe. Ah, uh, so, so, I mean, so... For what it was, it, it, yeah. Alright, moving on. Moving on, we had the Deadpool 2 trailer. Proper trailer came out today. Oh boy, oh boy. For me, it's a good trailer. But the trailer did not make me any more hype for the movie. But I think that's because I just have Infinity War in my head and I can't let anything I, else well, get in the way of that. This, I mean, obviously, one, we finally get to say, see Cable in action, which was great. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and I also looks like he's the villain. Well, yeah, villain, inverted commas. I think the other big point here is that uh, Deadpool is creating the X-Force. Yeah. That's pretty big. I mean, we, we, we all knew there was X-Force coming. Uh, but I didn't. I didn't quite expect it, the, the name drop just yet. Um, I have a feeling that they'll have the X Force, X Force, in here, like he says. But they'll probably all get killed off, and then they'll start the actual X Force later on when they actually do the maybe, movie. Maybe, maybe. But still, but, it was cool. Now, there's also some, yeah, there's some because there was some controversy with the film lately where um, they obviously did some reshoots. The reshoot that and uh, over that there was rumors going around the test screenings for it so that the movie was shit, yes. which is apparently false. That it actually scored higher than the first Deadpool movie. Right. Okay. Wow. I also heard and some the rumors reshoots, that there's. Oh, sorry, go on. The reshoots were to add in a super secret cameo. Yes, that's what I had heard, and yeah. of course, the first thing your mind flies to is Wolverine. Look, yeah, that's exactly what I said. The Lucas and me and him talking about. I said Wolverine. That'll be what it is. But no, here's I, the I thing. Mean, what if it's still not the, Wolverine? The, what if it's just 
Deadpool meets Hugh Jackman on the street as like a kind of fourth wall sort of thing. Yeah, he's that a Wolverine. It's just Hugh Jackman. That that would work. That would that would be perfect. Like he's maybe he'd like or he's going to like a book signing or he wants to get yeah. Hugh Jackman's signature. Did you or, did you yeah. did you catch the Indiana Jones thing at the beginning? Yes. You, Jesse did. I knew you would. I didn't think Ethan probably can't remember the original Indiana Jones and the Lost Ark too well. Because I was watching, no, I was like, oh. all right. So if you remember the one of the opening scenes of Indiana Jones, he's running across the paddock with all the, uh, the uh, yeah. Zulu guys, and he's you know start the plane, jock, jock, start the plane. Yeah. As soon as yeah. I saw him running it's down that alley, I start the car. It was like, oh wow, Indiana yeah. Jones, nice. <laughs> and we also got Terry Crews and Pennywise, yes. Bill Skarsgård yes. on this. Yeah. See, I'm I'm excited for that. I'm really excited to see Terry Crews. Oh boy, love me some Terry. So that be a fun said, I, I've been I've been playing the bad guy about Deadpool for the longest time now because I kept saying to people, "No, one, it's not why. It's <laughs> it's probably because I like Lobo. No, it's not. It's because I I like Deadpool, but I just um, Deadpool's kind of like Cards Against Humanity for me. Like I get I get over it. I'm I think I'm sort of so sick of it because so many people like Deadpool. Uh, right. I'm so you're an edgy, you're an edgy hipster. That's what you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm an edgy hipster of Deadpool. I'm just like yeah, shut I, the I fuck gotcha, up gotcha. about Deadpool. Or to me, I just don't find <laughs> I don't find holy fuck nuts funny. How, how I just do don't think that 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 no, that's not funny. funny. But being in no. the middle of a fight, hitting a slow mo scene, and then going, "Did I leave the stove on?" That's funny. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, I love Deadpool one, but I was like, <laughs> when Deadpool two was announced, I was like, oh, okay. But this trailer did the opposite to to me than what it did to Ethan. I actually got more excited for the movie because oh, of this no. trailer. I was like, oh, but, this I looks mean, great. It, for me, the only reason is no, ch- nothing's gonna top Infinity War for me. So until Infinity yeah. was out and done, I don't give a fuck about anything. Moving uh, on. Yeah. Yep. We have uh, a release date and a new trailer for Netflix's new TV show, The Rain, from yeah. the Danish, the Danish people. Yep, yep. The Danish so, people. Yeah, I, the Danish I, people. I'll be honest, I felt with that more recent trailer, I was a little bit, mm, a bit worried about yeah, some of the acting. P- people, people say that, well, the, the thing is now, they say that with the second trailer, it seems like it's aimed more at young adult and it's not going to be horror, because the synopsis release says that this when the kids come out from wherever the fuck they are and everything's gone, they still find out about love and death and all this sort of shit. So it seems like it's aimed at more young adults. Yeah, I don't want to find out. I'm, I'm an old man. I know all about love and death. Let's just get on with, with, with the, you know, supernatural cool stuff. Get on with the killing! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, fuck your love. The last bit of news, which is the biggest one, and that was we got another trailer for Infinity War. Oh boy. Now, I, I, when that trailer dropped at 11 p.m. last Friday, I literally did nothing for the next hour but watch that trailer on repeat. And I have watched it every day since. And I get chills every time I watch it because that movie is just, yeah, it's my and life right now. direction. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. I kind of just drifted <laughs> off there for a minute. Yeah. But, um, yeah. 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 You know why it's better than the last trailer? Could we get more shit in it? More, more well, than to me, to me, anyway. Um, because... If the reason that I, I still think the Comic Con trailer is the best by by just a little bit, because how grim it, it set the tone. Yeah, and the trouble yeah. is the next trailer, the first official trailer was more had more of the humor and the upbeat and you you know, and then this trailer took it back. Apart from sort of the bookends with some Spider Man stuff yeah. at the beginning and end, the rest of it's pretty grim. Uh, there's a few little lines, but it's largely a lot you know, and I like that. I do. I, the, the, I, I, I'm looking forward to more of that. Less laughter, more... And the thing is, though, you need the laughter, though, because when they're all, like, going, ha, 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 and then someone's head gets fucking blown off, you're like, whoa. The the one thing that stuck with me the most with this, the part that gives me the most chills whenever I watch the trailer, is the part where Thanos says, I hope they remember you. Yeah. For me, that's just, that's just, I don't know what it is with that line, that delivery, how he looks, because he... We can probably assume he's talking to Tony Stark at that point. I would yeah. assume. Yeah. It's just that just gives me the chills. At that point, to me, yeah. that's just I could just hear that line and be like, "That's the trailer done." Well, I'm you fine. can see you can see in another scene. There's Tony when he's kneeling down or whatever, and he's got the um, the new suit on, and it's all smashed it's all up. up. Yeah, and that's right. After he says, "I hope they remember you." Yeah, I, I kind of get a feeling that Tony's going to die on on Titan. No, 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 no. No, 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 I reckon the movie will end with how the first trailer started, showing Tony 
with like a fucked up arm on Titan. I reckon that'll be one of the closing shots for the movie. The movie will end with just Tony on Titan with Thanos, I reckon. It'll end something on like a cliffhanger that. and everyone will be pissed yeah. off. Yeah, right. it'll be something like that, I reckon. Awesome. So I was watching a YouTube video the other day and this gentleman had a really neat idea that really resonated with me that I, I want to share with you quickly that we're familiar with the scene where Thanos has Thor by the head and it's sort of when we first saw it in the Comic-Con trailer it almost looks like he's crushing his skull or snapping his spine. I talked about, talk about this with Lucas as well. Yeah, it's really because with this new trailer you get to see a bit more and what we get to see yep. is a scene with Loki and the... Um, Black uh, Order. The Black Order. Mm -hmm. And obviously there's one of them has got like a spear or something pointed at Loki. Proxima yeah, that's Midnight. Um, Proxima is Midnight, spear? isn't it? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then you've got Thanos on the sort of raised dais. Uh, and we've also seen other footage where we know Loki reveals the... the um, space Stone. The space Stone. And then in the next scene we sort of see um, Thanos grab Thor and bring him up. And yeah. then quickly followed by him crushing the space, uh, well, the Tesseract, whatever it is, he's got it in and, and whatever the, the, but, the container is. So the, the, the theory is, is that it's not Thor crying out in pain. It's Loki? It's, he, Thor, he's it's Loki. Thanos forcing Thor to watch the death of his brother. Yeah. Oh. And it's, if you yeah. watch that trailer again, it's not implausible. It's, it's not yeah. a bad call. But if you also take into account that when he picks up Thor by the head, he is fully armored. When he crushes the space stone, he does not have his big armor on. Ah, okay. So it's different scenes. But I, I completely agree with you because that's exactly what I said to Lucas. I said he's not hurting Thor. He's forcing Thor to watch the black. Because, I mean, take into account Loki lost him the Mind Stone in Avengers. He lost him the space stone. Thanos is going to be fucked off that he lost in two Infinity Stones. Yeah, well, I mean, they he gave him an army to take Earth, and he didn't he, do he it. Gives, yeah, he gives the Space Stone back from Loki here. The Mind Stone's the ones he's after. Vision has it. It's going to be the hardest stone for him to fucking get. So he's going to be pissed at Loki and probably won't let Loki live because of how Loki failed him. You're making it sound like yeah. like some kind of um, like boardroom chastise. You're like, fucked up three times. Well, it's it's, it's going to be what it is. Yeah, I think what's going to happen, and it, it wouldn't surprise me, it, it, it's is... You know, like, Loki's gotten away with it, and gotten away with it, and gotten away with it. And I mean, yeah. if anybody's going to hand out some punishment, it's going to be Thanos. And, you know, if you put that, that scene in early, you know, audiences are going to really know that this is a character who's not going to put up with any shit, and you just cannot fuck with. Yeah. Having said that, Loki's died so many times that, who knows? And my current theory for, because we see the giant ship come over New York, and we know that, well, what I reckon happens is, Thanos and that attack Thor's ship, Bruce Banner gets sent back to Earth. Either gets flung through space or space stone quickly back to Earth. The one crash one lands Thanos. into um, Sanctum, the Sanctum yep. with Doctor Strange. Mm -hmm. yep. So then they obviously contact Tony Stark. Tony Stark rocks up. Then the Q ship pops up over New York. Spider Man goes up. Captain. He calls Captain, mind he you. He calls Captain Alex and Yep. yep. So, and then Spider Man goes up to the Q ship. It starts flying away. Tony sends the Iron Spider suit up to him. Meanwhile, back down in New York, You've got Cap, Wong, Stark, and Banner. Cull Obsidian and Ebony Moore come down to have a fight. They're trying to get the, the Time Stone off Doctor Strange. I feel like they defeat them for a little bit momentarily. Stark and Strange end up going up to the ship with the Q ship where Peter is. Banner's like, fuck that, I'm not going back to space. You guys are on your own. <laughs> Wong stays in New York to look after the Sanctum. And then Stark, Spidey and Strange then hijack the Q-ship and fly it to Titan where they end up facing Thanos later on. That's mm. my theory on what happens with that. Yeah, you put yeah, a lot although I would, I would argue that Banner doesn't want to change back. He doesn't want to, he doesn't. That's why he has the Hulkbuster yeah. in the fight. I was going to say, explain yeah. why he's in the Hulkbuster, yeah. 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 Although, he, uh, is it confirmed that he's in yep. there? Yes, yes. Yeah, there, there's, yeah. A, there's, a, there's, a, there's a toy that got released showing Hulk bursting out of the Hulkbuster. And there's also, okay. uh, Hot Toys just announced their Cos Babies line, which also has um, banner inside the Hulkbuster. Yeah, I'm. I'm sorry. What? And then Cos, got... Cos what? Cos babies. They're adorable baby <laughs> versions of characters. Is that what you're and... supposed to say at work, or is that the reality <laughs> of the situation? That's the reality of the situation. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think what we might do as well um, is uh, I'm going to take the some audio recording gear with me. And then as soon as we finish watching the film, because we're going to see it early, we're going to go see it at like uh, 2.20. As soon as we come out of that, 
we'll, we're gonna we're gonna record our thoughts. That's the news. That's the trailers. Um, lots of stuff happening. Uh, of course, if you've uh, found your way to our website, we'll have all those trailers in uh, the article below. Um, but now we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Tomb Raider, which uh, Ethan and I haven't seen yet, although I am reasonably keen to see it. Uh, I'll probably wait for home release, but uh, Jesse, of course, has already popped down to the cinema and seen it, and he's going to share with us his spoiler-free thoughts on this film. Yes. So, I apparently am all alone because very few people I know have seen it. Me and my manager seem to be the only two people. It only and, just um, came out this week, didn't it? Uh, last week, I think it was. Okay. Because okay. this week, I think, was Pacific Rim came out yesterday. Pacific Rim was out. It was out yesterday, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. And Red Sparrow is out this week as well, I think. Yep. Yep, yep. But yeah, no, like, when Tomb Raider came out, everyone I was talking to just didn't seem to really give a shit. And I think that that's because video game movies largely suck ass I, but, think, um, and I, I agree with you I think that's a lot of the stigma that, that this film's mm. had to carry is is that mentality and I, I'm guilty of it too when they sort of announced that even though I'm a big fan of the lead actress I was sort of like eh, but it's a video game movie yeah I groaned too I was like oh really another Tomb Raider movie but uh, honestly like yeah spoiler free um I thought it was great um I was I actually went into it with no expectations at all even though I like it, Alicia Vikander and I like the video game that it's Almost Alicia. completely based off of, can we basically. Say, can we say Alicia? Game. It's the same thing. <laughs> yeah, like Sorry. if you played Sorry. the 2014, was it 2014? Uh, 2013, I think it was. 2013. Yeah, when you, yep. if you played that reboot of Tomb Raider, which everyone universally liked, you will like this movie because it's exactly the same thing, just with some story beats changed around. Cool. I, I haven't played it but yeah I mean I yeah. would this is for me like I would definitely watch the, like if you said to me in six months time or whatever oh, oh this Friday Tomb Raiders on Netflix I would go watch it yeah oh, it's totally good and and Alicia Vikander is great like she's still proving that she's an awesome actress and like the one the one is complaint she, I've heard she from people married to Fassbender or something yep yes yeah that's yeah, why she was so. in that awful movie like Between Oceans <laughs> you yeah, should yeah. it was fucking yeah. terrible I, I, I haven't reviews. seen it I well, haven't seen about how D took I love Michael Fassbender. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. He's got he has an absolutely pristine track record. <laughs> I know he doesn't, but don't talk shit about Michael Fassbender, right? <laughs> don't talk shit about my Magneto. <laughs> this is <Yeah>. Britney alone. <laughs> this but, is but really... seriously though, like Tomb Raider's quite good. Uh, all the actors they picked were good. Walton Goggins is quite good as the like the main antagonist. Right. He, I'm gonna hit you with a question. Though. I'm gonna hit you with a question I think a lot of people have. In the movie, mm. does she go into sort of, sort of like an ancient temple that's been sealed for a million years and pick up ammunition? No. Okay, because that happens in the movie. Oh, end. wait. No. But it could have yeah. been dropped from someone she killed in the temple. No. Nope. In the movie. He, no, he, in the movie. He does go into a sealed area that's been sealed for thousands of years, and but she doesn't technically get ammunition because I don't recall her actually handling a firearm. Okay, that's interesting, considering in nearly every game, including the original, like, it was always those twin pistols. Ah, yes, but there is a cool little nod at the very end of the movie. She ha So you've seen in the trailers, uh, have you seen the trailers where you can see Nick Frost, Frost is in it? Yeah. Yeah, so Nick Frost plays a, a pawnbroker, and this isn't a spoiler. Um, she goes to see him to try and get some cash to, to start her journey, so she tries to pawn something. And she comes back to him at the very end of the movie and she looks over his shoulder and sees in the back room this cabinet absolutely chock-a-block of guns. And so the last shot of the whole movie is her going in there with him and his wife and she looks at these two custom pistols and they're silver and black and she and they're fucking huge, like way over oversized. And she picks them up and she's like, oh, and then the wife's like, oh, they're my favorite. They're this, they're this, they're, this, they're so good. And then she's like... I'll get two, and she holds them up either side of her head, just like like poster art from the second Tomb yeah. Raider. Yeah. And I was like, oh fuck me. <laughs> nice, nice. But it's it's good, it's good. Like they they perfectly blended it to the point where if they make a sequel and they take her down the road to, like the road of a a gun toting Tomb Raider now, it'll work really well. And I really hope my hope for Tomb Raider is this one was a really good like gritty action movie. It's got some good, like some good things to say. Like, hey, look, this is in the game. Like, um, you know the, have you, like, if you, either of you guys played the the reboot of the Tomb yeah, Raider game? I played the first no, one. I haven't. There's so in the game, there's a lot of puzzles you have to do where you have to knock like pallets full of crap down and like set them on fire and stuff. In the movie, uh, there's a scene where the camera glides over some people's shoulders, and you see these zip lines that they've got 
carrying um, packages of material up the mountainside for the workers. And those packages literally are pellets with stuff with tarps on them and like really obvious gas cans. <laughs> And I looked at it, I was like, ah, it's right for the game. But cool. it's really good. Some like, nice homages really then. But yeah, no, Tomb Raider looks quite good. Um, I really hope if they, they do a sequel, they take it in the direction of a Mission Impossible style movie. I think that could be really, really good. Uh, but that's just my take. Like, if I was given the power to choose, I would do a Mission Impossible style um, Tomb Raider movie. She could do some globe trotting because now she's done that origin story and now we can believe her going around kicking people's asses. Yep, fair enough. Okay. Well, can we say instead of Mission Impossible, Indiana Jones? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Because like, you've got to have the map with the little red dots. <laughs> See, I think that I think that Indiana Jones needs to be very specifically done to work these days. Those adventure movies are kind of dying, and it just doesn't doesn't yeah, work. Which like is it used sad. Because I love it is a good sad. adventure film. I love film. adventure movies. I love. And I, not... that's the thing. Or is Tomb Raider an adventure film, or is it an action film? No, nah, it's not. It's not really an. It's kind of an adventure film in that it's got like a a more light, a, a, like a more light um atmosphere, and it's sort of like you know, hey, let's you know, we're oh we're in a ship and it's sinking, and oh we're gonna fall down the mountainside and go into tombs, and yes, yeah, so it's kind of light like that. It's kind of goofy in its dealing with like you know the the whole like this par paranormal abilities of this ancient goddess and blah blah blah. But it's not like literally the Ark of the Covenant kind of stuff. Yeah, I miss yeah. those sorts of things. I I, I I miss that too. Those, yeah. those films are amazing. Those yeah, like I grew up with that. I kind of was hoping Tomb Raider might get some of that, but it, it takes the vibe of it to some point. But it's mostly just a good action movie. It's about that's about it. Fair enough. All right. So out of five stars, well, I'd give it four. It's pretty good. That's pr it's pretty solid. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty All good. Right. It was very surprisingly good. Let's move on to our topic of conversation while well, we've got some time left. Uh, and that is uh, something that Jesse probably knows quite a bit about, um, but all of us have dabbled in some form or another, and that's movie memorabilia uh, and collectibles and that sort of jazz. So I guess the first question is uh, that I hit you guys with: what, what's what's your limit in terms of you know dollars spent, uh, floor space? Um, know, that for me. Sorry, sorry for interrupting you too. No, you're right. So, I mean, is, is Sky the limit, or are you sort of like, I spend $10 at most? Um, it purely depends on what it's from. Depends on how much I will spend on it. That's right. fair. The, the, the one thing, I, I don't really... The, the closest movie memorabilia I have would be Pop Finals. I have a lot of, like, video game collectibles and stuff like that, but no movie ones, because the only one thing I want for a movie, I can't get anymore anyway, so... Well, Are you the sort of person though that like you see these people who who like go and buy, you know, uh, props that have seen screen time, like you know an R two D two or a Dalek or a vehicle yeah. from say Mad Max or something? Would would you spend that kind of money? Would you spend no. somewhere more than ten thousand dollars, for instance? On if, a... if I had more than ten thousand dollars, sure. But right. so um, so Ethan, in twenty years' time, you know, if you get an opportunity to buy. You know, an infinity gauntlet that saw screen time, but it cleans out your entire life savings. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit, wow. Well, okay, here's the thing. I don't know about an infinity gauntlet, but if I could get my hands on one of the guns from District 9, I would spend every cent I have to get one of those. Where the workshop yeah. released so you, a you, would you run around yelling, you fucking prawn at everybody? You fucking prawns? When a workshop made a select amount of actual like replica props you could buy for one to one scales. Right. And I was still didn't wasn't working, still like sixteen when that movie came out, so I couldn't buy them and I can't find them anywhere. But I would love to get my hands on any one of those guns from District Nine. It's my favorite movie Isn't of all time. Isn't that funny though? Like here's District oh, no. Nine, which was a popular film, a great film, uh, you know, that came out not that long ago by comparison. Uh, two thousand nine. Yeah, and yet you str Yet I could go on eBay right now and buy Deckard's blaster. It yeah, you cost pay me a fuck ton of Yeah, it might cost it, me like seven hundred dollars or something. That thing's bullshit. But I, <laughs> I mean, I've wanted some of the 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 alcohol glasses for yeah, a long I time. I have a couple. Of those. <laughs> you do, ones. They're like eighty dollars for a set, or no, sixty dollars yeah. each or something, right? Yeah, you man. Know, for a bit of glass like that just happens to be put in a certain design. Yep. You know? Yeah, they're ridiculously. But expensive. you now, you also bought the tile 
uh, or at least the mold for the tile. Did you? You won't let that go. I won't because it's unusual. It's an unusual thing. Like a lot of people will buy something that's you know, like as I said, a prop replica or or, or whatever have you, or posters or a pop bottle. But you you've bought something that would allow you to decorate a living area that's, yes. I, that's i'm not criticizing you i find that interesting like yeah. what was the train of thought what does it was it impulse or was this something you had thought about no or? i mean because it was so expensive I, I thought long and hard about it i was thinking do i really want to buy the template for decades like apartment tiling and i thought yes one day i would like my my kitchen area to be tiled in this fucking ugly apartment tiling <laughs> right and, and how much can i ask how much that set you back that one tile um cost i think it was 187 australian dollars All including right. yeah. <laughs> yeah okay so 100 so it's a tile that you're then able to make a mold from yes right yeah so it's, it's, it's the tile and the and the plus that the uh the plaster mold that it came that came with it Right, okay, so that you could then cast more from. Yes, yeah, so I can cast more from it. And I've got it, like, locked. Literally locked in a box. <laughs> right, okay. See, I think... I'm just trying to think, like, my own, my own self, like... Uh, I think the probably the rarest thing I had, uh, have, uh, is a film poster, like, the, from the cinema. And actually, no, I think it was from a video library. Um, for Conan the Destroyer, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh. Uh, it belonged to my uncle and who's who's only a few years older than I am and I as a young kid was a huge fan and, and had of the film and had nagged him for it for for years and years and years and years and years and we fell out of touch and we haven't spoken in, in decades but my other uncle who stayed in touch with him uh, when I saw him oh Ten years ago or something he had gotten a hold of this poster because obviously my uncle had grown up got married like, like you don't you get rid of a lot of that stuff and so he got yeah. the poster for me and had it laminated um so that's probably one of the more obscure or at least my most obscure m sort of collective pieces but i don't even do pop vinyl like i have yeah. four pop vinyl i i, I get pop vinyls purely Five. for the reason that they release things for movies, games, TV shows that you can't really find any other like collectibles or memorabilia for. It. That's why I get pop vinyls. What, so what, what kind of pop vinyls have you guys collected? I've got like Fifth Element ones and stuff like that. Okay. I have, uh, well, I have two that have nothing, I have three that have nothing to do with, with movies, and that's I've got a, a Diablo and um, a Tyrael from the Diablo 3. I've got a Cthulhu because I'm a, a big Lovecraft fan. Uh, oh, but in terms is it, of movies... is it the green one? Yes. Yeah, I've got that one too. And I know that Jesse doesn't like. But in uh, terms of movies, on. I've got um, I've got uh, a Sarah and the Worm from Labyrinth. Yay! I got, I got that too. And, and I've got Lu and I've got Ludo. Uh, and that's you're just lucky. Purely... Ludo, he's not easy to find. Yeah, uh, I, I was aware of that too, and I got him at a good price. Um, that's only because I've probably watched Labyrinth more times than you know. You guys have had hot meals. Uh, I, I've watched that movie far too many times um, and they were cheap and it was there and I'm like okay whatever but I mean there's a lot of movies that I enjoy and I've bought you know multiple versions of on DVD and Blu-ray over the years like Big Trouble in Little China I, I have like three yep. versions of it I think um, but I wouldn't buy a pop vinyl for it I've seen them and I'm like cool but to me it's sort of it's a bit of plastic for $20, $30 and then where do well, I put for it? Me. I want to get the the Dark Crystal pop vinyls. I want to get the Jin and Kira ones. Right. Because th there's not much else you can get for like Dark mm. Crystal merchandise and things out there, and that's what I, I like the most about pop vinyls. Is there's there's a board game for Dark Crystal that was just released. Yeah, I saw that too, and, and a Labyrinth yeah. one as well. Yeah. Yeah, I've got I got the Labyrinth one. The, the, I think it's, I'm pretty sure the same River Horse, same company that made Labyrinth one, but, did the. I Dark mean, Crystal one. if I had the money, I would cover an entire house full of movie collectibles. I want to get like, like full size, like Alien Egg and stuff like that. Oh yeah, I so have the like um, I have the Atlantean sword as well at at one to one size, which I bought. I forgot because I bought it. My girlfriend bought it for me forty years ago. Oh, not forty, twenty years ago. Sorry, Atlantean sword. Yes. Oh, of, well, yeah, uh, Barbarian and Destroyer. Yeah. Uh, it's, oh, it's, so not the Father Sword or whatever it's called. No, which I did like also. No, it's it's the Atlantean Sword, which has got the okay. the the grip on the blade, so that you can wield it as a like a, a one and a half like yeah. a bastard sword. Yeah. So I've got that. 
I mean, I, there was a there was a Netflix series I think not long ago. If it's probably still there, where it, was to, it dealt with like um, uh, there was one about Back to the Future and, and people that were collecting the stuff and like who. Oh yeah, the yeah. There's one stuff. about Ghostbusters as well. And there was one about Ghostbusters as well. And, all this sort of, and you see some of these people and like they spend an awful lot of money. Mm -hmm. Lots um, of money. Do you know of anybody that's sort of done a big spend on something that you would think's a little crazy? Um, I do. Uh, I yeah. mean, I spend a lot of money on collectibles, but I knew this guy. So one of the one of my prized possessions is a replica of Mal's pistol from Firefly. Ooh, All right. Yep. Yeah, well, I've got one of the original, um, uh, like a oh crap, what's it called? Um, resin uh, prop replicas that QMX did years ago. They're they're way more expensive than the metal yeah, coated ones now. Um, I bought it from a guy down the coast, and when I got to his house, he's like, um, oh yeah. Uh, no, I just I just don't really need it because he was selling it for a really good price because those things were bloody expensive, and um and he's like yeah come inside and I'll, I'll show you and I went into his house on his on the ground floor and it was just like an average looking house but his whole bottom floor of his house was a massive retro Star Wars collection he had mint or near mint pinball machines from all the original trilogy movies he had screen used um. Uh, Obi Wan Kenobi uh, lightsaber hilt. He had a screen used um, dummy uh, resin pistol from Han Solo. He had like so much stuff. It was unbelievable. I, like my jaw almost fell off. I was so astounded by what he had, and it was all properly lit. The whole he had like a a keypad entry code to get into that room. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, it was in insane. I remember turning to him and saying, "You better be careful who you show this stuff to. Someone will come and like knock you off for it. <laughs> like this stuff is is like." worth a fortune especially as pinball machines to some collectors out there not just styles collectors but pinball machine collectors yeah and yeah i think because uh, i said to him i don't even know how much he spent on this and he goes oh it's easily in the vicinity of, of a couple million for everything insane absolutely insane like i collect hot toys i collect replicas i collect movie posters i'm really big on us one sheets i've like one of my favorite posters i have is the escape from new york original one sheet that hung in australian mm -hmm. cinemas mm-hmm so yeah, like that kind of stuff. I'm still hunting the thing and Big Trouble in Little China. I'm outing myself obviously as a John Carpenter fan because I just keep <laughs> just, battling off John just, Carpenter. Just a movie. little bit. Just a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I fucking love John Carpenter. Like uh, and so yeah, I'm still. So looking you've got for Prince in Darkness? No. Aha, uh -huh. now there you go, fucked your day. Now you got another one to find. Yeah, I know, yeah. It's just it's Because that was going. one of his first independents too, because he got the shits mm -hmm. after I think it was Big Trouble uh, with the studio yeah. interference, and that's when he did Prince of Darkness off his own back. Yeah, yeah, because the fog and um, big trouble in Little China were like he was getting pissed off by them controlling mm -hmm. him. But yeah, no, like I know what you mean. Like this movie stuff in the world we live in, uh, like like Ethan said, there isn't a lot you can get for obscure or or just general like movie memorabilia that isn't pop vinyls, which is part of the reason why I hate pop vinyls so much. <laughs> I think we do you think we were at a bit of a disadvantage in Australia um, being that like yeah. obviously a lot of the props are built and uh, for most of a, a lot of our favorite films are built and then sort of deconstructed in the US you know yeah, getting this stuff to Australia um, obviously can make you can buy that stuff in public, like like pri private and public auctions in in the US but here yeah no yeah. way it's so hard we're just so we're a world away like it's crazy. I mean, we're lucky with Weta. We get more of the Weta yes, stuff. Yes, I was at get uh, Supernova Sydney. Was it Supernova Sydney? I think. I'm pretty sure it was a few years ago. Four years ago or something like that for ATGN. And Weta was there with one of the, the chaps. I recognized him from the making of, of Lord of the Rings. And they were selling some prop replicas as well. And they were pretty competitively priced too. But it was sort of just mm. odd things. Like it was like a pipe. Or a book. Yeah, yeah, like the Thor and Oaken Shield pipes were really big, and the the Gandalf yeah. pipe. This was, I yeah, think, they... this was pre-Hobbit. Could have been pre-Hobbit, but uh, uh, yeah, it was interesting. But again, like I'm, I, I, I just can't. I, I'd like that, but then it's like, where would I put it? I'm not very. I I don't have a lot of collectibles or ornaments. I don't know how to display properly. I wouldn't care to display properly. Like my Conan poster and sword are both put away. Like I just. You have them, so, but you just well, don't want to put that, them in. That's kind of like the issue with me. Like, I have not a lot of movie stuff, but I have a lot of, like, video game collectibles and stuff like that. And I don't know how to display them properly. I have a bookcase, and each shelf's, like, designated to, like, one thing. Like, one shelf's just all Bioshock stuff. 
Yeah, you can move things shot. on there, and I've I don't want to move it. It's just piling up with dust. Yeah. And I got like another shelf that's just all Assassin's Creed stuff and like heaps of stuff like that. But I, I don't know how to display it. I've got a lot of it just tucked away in the cupboard because I got nowhere to put it. So for at the that's moment, a, I'm like the trouble of displaying. Yeah. It's hard. So for now, I'm like, uh, well, no more buying cookable stuff for me because I got nowhere to put it at the moment. All right. So let's assume for a minute that money is no object. You have you know a billion dollars, right? Whatever. Yep. Money is no object. What one thing would you buy as a collectible from a movie? The Street Nine Gun. Okay, that was pretty. Oh, easy. I'll, I'll track it down and find it straight away. Wow, that's a very that's a very original choice, Ethan. I'm not don't think I've ever heard anyone have quite want so much love for one District of 9. those guns, like so bad. I would sound my testicles to get one of those guns. <laughs> I didn't say that well, there's at least fifty cents on the course. I'm probably not going to have <laughs> kids like some, some guy with a gum tree. I just went, oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> Craig's, Craig's list just lit up. Yeah. <laughs> like, we heard this podcast. This guy wants to sell us not. <laughs> All right, Jesse. So money's no object. What is it that you uh, you would acquire? Jesus. Oh. See, well, I mean, I mean, my mind's really Jesus. Too, like, think about things. Like, you could get things like, you know, you know, there's people out there with one-offs in terms of, like, film reels of, like, movies yeah. that, you know, are in private collections. You know, there's there's people mm-hmm. out there that have still got Doctor Who episodes that are lost. Yeah, no, sure. there's a lot. Like, a and they won't hand them back in because they're like, I'm the only one that's got this. Yeah, you know, like there's stuff like that, like really obscure one-offs. Mm. Um, like Carrie Fisher had the only known printed version, like copy, like on disc of um, the Christmas special. Apparently, rumor has. Yeah. She she also had one of the one of the only master props of um of uh the Dorothy's shoes as well from right. Wizard of Oz. Yeah, like I can't remember how she how she got them or she got rid of them, but I remember there was a story that was like cuz there's one of them it's on display sold for like $580,000 about like 2008 or something. It was crazy. And um, and the lion costume is made out of real lion hide, and it sold for like a couple million. So, yeah, you've got infinite money. What do you buy, Jesse? What would you buy if you could? If oh. you could? If it could be bought? If it could be bought, um, honestly, I would buy one of the screen used um, uh, graboids from Tremors. Okay, why is that? Because I have watched that movie more times than anything else ever, I think. I, I love that movie since I was a little kid. Um, so, yeah, the original Tremors has been a part of my life forever. Um, it's kind of, as much as I love Labyrinth, it's kind of probably like the equivalent of what you said for Labyrinth for you. Like, I love Labyrinth to death, but I've yeah. watched Tremors even more. Yeah, I mean, if I had a billion dollars, I'd just buy Jennifer Connelly. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I would buy a time machine and go back in time and then try and woo Jennifer Connelly in career opportunities. Um, what would I, what would I... What would I? I mean, there's lots of things that I think are cool. I mean, who doesn't want the original '89 Batman Batmobile? But I thought you were about space. to say outfit with nipples. But anyway, like, no, yeah, I really <laughs> want. I want the bat credit card. I, I I think like there's lots of things that I I think are really cool. I don't know if I would put them above anything. Like having a Skeksy would be cool. You have it to sit in your living room. Yeah, like literally. Guillermo del Toro has that shit. Have you ever seen Guillermo del Toro's house? No, I haven't. He hasn't invited me yeah. over yet. So there's there's, there's a video. Up. I, think, I can't remember up. who. <laughs> yeah, okay. I can't remember. He's your friend, isn't he? Just get him to invite He's me really over for the friend. next house party and uh, oh. you can show me in person. Yeah, <laughs> Guillermo del Toro, if you ever listen to this podcast, please invite me over. I want to see your collection. <laughs> then we'll sit down and talk about Call of Cthulhu, right? Exactly. Because <laughs> well, yeah, I just continue as if I've t- I've been there myself. I can't remember yeah. who did a. Someone went like they did a video. It was Conan, Conan O'Brien or somebody, and they went to his house and um, talked to him. And he's got like the most insane movie monster collections in the world. He has um, like a life size uh, Bella Lugosi Dracula in his house. He has um, he's got an actual uh, screen used Reagan um, Exorcist doll. 
Wow. Okay. Yeah, like life size. And that's she the other sits... thing. These bastards in the movie industry get all the best stuff. Oh, I know. That's why I want to get in the movie industry so bad. Just so I you can watch, just go to the You watch the making options. of Lord of the Rings, and every one of them are like, on the last day of shooting, we just need everything. I got my own everything. fucking horse. <laughs> It's like, oh, we're just walking around, like, you know, Frodo's house, Bilbo's house, and we just talk shit. It's like, you yeah, bastards. Yeah, I know. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> you bastards. That being said, it's better than all the Hollywood stories you hear where they're just like, yeah, and we just burnt it all. Yeah. Like, all that effort. I mean, yeah. I would, if I was in the film industry, I would do what Ryan Reynolds did, and I would just steal my costume. I would just take it. Be like, what, yeah. what are you going to do with it? You're just going to throw it away. Yeah, it's custom tailored anyway. I'm pretty sure that Jack Nicholson actually stole his Joker costume, or some part of it actually from Batman. Right. Yeah, there's a few of them like that. I know Michael Keaton was offered the suit, but he said no because it's so damn uncomfortable. Right. Yeah. So I mean, for me, I'd probably have a you know a anything really cool from say Labyrinth, like uh, you know, like a Hoggle. That'd be kind of cool. <laughs> you want the, just the you don't want the the dwarf that was in the suit. No, actually, uh, there was. Uh, a, a, some an article I remember recently reading. Uh, I, I I saw the photos. They showed uh, the Hoggle from that uh, from the original Labyrinth, and he's just been sitting in storage, and he's decomposed. Yeah, he, yeah. He looks like latex. something from Five Nights at Freddy's. Like he's <laughs> he's terrifying now. <laughs> so so at, at work, we actually have a one to one scale life size Wonder Woman, uh, the Gal Gadot oh, okay. version, right. and she's um she has she's real ass eyed like her eyes go in the wrong direction <laughs> and uh <laughs> it's so like every time i see her I, I always have sunglasses on so i always put my sunglasses on her um right. but um i've had so many people come up to me and say like wow she's two thousand dollars and i'm like yeah she's really expensive um and, and then they're like oh would you recommend getting her and i always tell people um you know like it's totally up to you if you want to get it but me personally i wouldn't buy any of those NECA life-size replicas because they're made of foam latex and and like foam latex in the film industry is notorious for like they call it the yeah. leprosy of foam latex because it just decays yeah yeah so like over years you'll get it and it'll last you a good like 10 years but then like her nose will start to shrink and her eyes will like her face will start to melt yeah and like that's what happened to Hoggle too it's probably what happened to Ludo and all the other puppets as well and it's just dreams turning into into nightmares right it's true nightmares yeah I mean, I don't know if the Skeksis, because they're pretty, they're pretty thin face. They might have been more, they might have been harder material. I don't know. Yeah, well, they're being rebuilt now, anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, I'm sure that the, I can't remember what they're called, but the the main characters of um, Dark Tower, the Dark Tower, the fuck, Dark Crystal, <laughs> they're um, they they're probably falling apart. Yeah, yeah, because they were so real too. soft. Unless they're preserved in something, you know. Amazing, frozen but, and carbonite, yeah, or, or anything from Conan, like the original Schwarzenegger films. I'd, I'd be keen. Just James Earl Jones. Yeah, I'll have James. Yeah, Bye, James he, Earl Jones. he can sit there and read Poe to me at night. That's fine. Oh, good old yeah. James with his goofy hair. All right. Well, I guess what we really want to do is hear from uh, all of our three listeners uh, about what they collect and what they would Ooh, collect. All here. Yeah. So I mean, let us know if you had infinite funds, what single movie collectible would you pick and why let us know we'd love to hear that's about all we've got time for this fortnight um we'll be back next fortnight obviously with a lot more news uh and uh hopefully some more movie reviews i'm not sure what's coming out in the next fortnight some stuff um ready player one yes right that'll be i don't one. know who's <laughs> doing that i'm not it's sure if i can fight someone yeah. Oh, uh, you, you you can do it, Jesse. Oh, no, that's all right. If someone's into it, they can totally do it because I know there's more people out there big fans of it than I am. I I've never read the book. I know nothing uh, about it. Neither have I. I know Lucas. I, I won't be seeing it until like Saturday or Sunday though. Lucas is mad keen for that one too. I think, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. All right. All right. Well, actually, Jesse, you've given me an idea. We're going to John Carpenter our way out this week. So lots of synth. Ooh. You ready? Fucking Halo again.